Um, great. So Sammy, if you guys don't know who she is, you've been living under a rock. Um, she is the top rep in Green Bay office. She is a uh, number two in the division. She is also a D1 college softball player. And so she's been taking this by storm with Cutco. I think it's been five weeks, Sammy, I think. I think it's been five weeks or four or five weeks, five, six weeks, I don't know, that, you, that you've been working. And, and you've had three weeks in a row, over 4,000. You're already at 2,300 this week with Miracle Monday tonight and rolling into a massive push and instantly has gone from not even starting like five weeks ago to all of a sudden the number two person in the state or in our division, I should say, for you Upers. And uh, she's doing a great, great job. So I wanted her to specifically talk about um, and have like uh, some tips on uh, the morning growth alliance and the morning meetings, why they're so important, what she gets out of them, and then also, you know, some tips on what she's doing to have these, these big weeks consistently, meaning anybody can have one big week, but it takes a champion to have consistent big weeks. So Sammy, go ahead and uh, take it away. All right. My Wi-Fi is a little glitchy right now, so if I cut out, I'll just type all my notes and send them to you guys. But can you guys hear me good right now? Okay, yeah. cool. Awesome. So yeah, Growth Alliance, so that's kind of like, you know, our champs club. Um, if you guys are in the group chat, I'm always like, okay guys, see a champs club in the morning. Like, I never miss it. Um, but that's just because I think it's so important. So why? Because, you know, parents are getting ready in the morning for work. So it's a great time to call because they're at home and they have their schedule there where if you call, you know, in the middle of the day, um, you know, usually they're at work or maybe sometimes you can catch them, which is nice. But yeah, that's why I love the mornings, getting up early. Um, it's just a great time to call. Um, secondly, I'm looking at my notes here. Um, you get to meet with different managers. So every single day, it's a different manager and you get, Josh likes to call it nuggets. So um, you get little nuggets every single day from different managers. Um, I take advantage of this. So like if I have a demo at night and you know, there's, you know, I got to handle an objection and I didn't know how to handle it at the time. I'll go to champs club the next morning. And I'll be like, Hey, this is what happened. Like, what do I do? And they give me great advice. So that's another huge reason why you should go to Growth Alliance and Champs Club. And then lastly, like, who are you becoming? Like, this is your business. Um, who do you want to be and what do you want to do this summer, like, with this job? So it's up to you. If you want to get up early and call people, start booking demos, like, you're going to be successful. You're going to get it done. And it's just, um, yeah, I can't talk about it enough. I absolutely love it. Um, next I'm going to talk about, can I move on Jason? Okay, cool. So next I'm going to talk about selling like for big weeks. Um, I'm not special, like in any way I literally read the script. So, um, I'm telling you guys, if you just book demos, it's a total numbers game. If you book demos, you're going to make money and you're going to make sales. So call people, like I said, Growth Alliance. You're gonna be up early calling people, booking demos. If you're booking three demos a week right now, great, but try to get that to like 10 to 15 demos a week. Um, I know that's how much I have been doing. I'm gonna do more for the push now, but the reason why I'm selling big amounts is because I have so many demos booked. Um, and then also just know how to handle objections, really listen in on Lake's talk today because he'll give some great pointers. And then just be passionate with every single presentation that you give. Like, I know it can be kind of like boring watching that video 20 times a day, but like have fun with it. Like get up close to the camera and be like, did you see it cut through the leather? Like, did you see that? Cause the people love it. So if you're passionate during your demos, like, guaranteed sale they want to help you so have fun with it um like i said i'm not doing anything special i'm just super passionate about the product i believe in myself and i go at it with you know a confident mentality so you guys can totally do what i'm doing i'm not doing anything special you just got to work hard go to growth alliance and good things are going to fall into place mm. thank you sammy all right. 
So everyone, take a look at, at your notes here. What was your biggest takeaway from, like, like what, what, uh, what resonated with you? Type in the chat. And Josh says they are nuggets. We all got nuggets. What, what I love too about the division is you guys are thinking about your biggest nugget is like, we have all different types of people, managers leading you. And so that's what's so great is we all come together to be able to help guide you in different ways. And besides your, your manager out of whose office you're out of is great, but you know, you can learn something from every manager for sure. So be passionate, energy, 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 energy. Yep. Great, Brett, Bailey. Do the work, let it fall into place, right? Stop worrying about the numbers. Stop worrying about if they're going to pick up, how your day's going to go. Just know if you do the numbers, if you do those initial leading indicators that are going to create that success, it's all going to average out. Just make the phone call, set up the demos. It's all going to work out, right? Can't forget to have fun, Jakai. There you go. It's on the numbers. Do the work. Be hype. Katie, be hype. Yes. I love it. Like, who are you becoming with this job, right? How are you growing? Have you guys all grown a little bit already? Isn't it cool? You guys are growing as a person in a job. You did not think you, that would happen this summer, did you? You're struggling, trying to find work and trying to see what's going to happen this summer. And you stumbled upon this knife job and all of a sudden you're becoming a better person, right? Aubrey, hard work breeds success. Have fun, Jordan. Be enthusiastic. Love it. Yep. Put in the work, Kaylee. Of course. Try more demos, more money. Look at all those nuggets. Cool. So um, for a quick, for the last couple of minutes here is an interview, either questions from, from the reps or interview questions from the managers. You know, managers, what questions do you have for Sammy? Or reps, what questions do you have for Sammy about having big weeks or the morning uh, champs club? Sammy, do you phone outside of, phone, uh, outside of uh, champs club and team meetings? I do not a ton, but if I like think of somebody on like while I'm driving, like this weekend, I was in Beloit and on my way there, I was like, you know, I'm going to call my aunt's neighbor because I think she would be available this weekend. Um, so I called her. So yeah, I'm constantly thinking of people. I know we're not supposed to work all the time, but I, I am working all the time. Like I'm always thinking of people. And as soon as I think of somebody, I try to call them right when I think of them. So I don't forget. So what percentage of the phone calls that you make or demos that you book would, would you say is during champs club or team meetings? Um, unfortunately I can't make a lot of team meetings because I'm coaching this summer. So I book or champs club or champs club. Champs club. Yeah. So I book a lot during champs club. And like I said, I love the mornings because all of the parents are at home getting ready for work and they so have like, their school with them. Like 70 to 90% of your demos that you book is during champs club. Oh yeah, for sure. Not too bad. Making that much money, just waking up in the morning and going yeah, to champs club. Yeah, I stay in my pajamas. <laughs> So nice. I check Q every morning, and the reason why she has 10 to 15 demos is just because she shows up to Champs Club and books two or three every single time. It's not that hard. Like, you literally don't have to just work a ton. She literally just shows up to Champs Club, books two to three demos a day, and she's set for the week. Yeah, Lake called me one night, and he's like, I think you should sleep in tomorrow. Like, you seem a little stressed. And I'm like, Champs Club. I can't miss Champs Club. Come on. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep her saying that's all. <laughs> I'm, I'm not scared. Ask me another question. Ask me another question. <laughs> all right. So um, my main issue isn't really like calling the people. It's more of having the people to call. I'm I'm working through the post demo and doing all the recos and stuff, but even if I'm going through the script, uh, I'm I'm only getting two or three. Now, what I've what I've been doing to kind of keep myself motivated and saying is saying that, hey, at the end of every demo, I'm basically doubling the person I just had. But I'm I'm still I still haven't even gotten a single like person who gave me five recos. So I guess that's pretty much what I'm asking: how to get more. So two things, Sammy, I'll give you, I'll let you give a tip, uh, but since you just started this weekend and you haven't had advanced training yet 
and any of that will teach you. And Carmen's going to help you with some more names and numbers. So we'll help you through that. That's normal. Your first weekend, Sounds once you good. learn that in advanced training, and then you go field training and you memorize your approach, right? So the, the ladies that were on this morning for advanced training, how many were those lines and the uh, reminders for, uh, for, for recommendations, right? So Aubrey, Josie, and Kaylee experienced that. So just for time's sake, we're not going to go through all the details, but Sammy, what's a tip to get, to get more recommendations? Yeah, you're definitely ahead of the game if you haven't even been through the complete training yet. So pros to you. Um, uh, what I usually do is I have like this presentation set up and it like pumps my customers up to give me recos. Show and it. You'll, yeah, you'll learn about it. Oh, you want me to show it? Show it. Okay. Perfect. I'll show it. I, don't, I know a couple people have seen it, but not everyone has the, the initial recommendation. Um, right. You know. Okay, so I just like have this little presentation. Everyone needs to make one of these. Like, this is why I sell stuff. Um, I just talk about me, my favorite things in life, why I chose Cutco, and then I talk about my goals, and I hammer this because everyone likes goals. Everyone wants to achieve goals. So I hammer this, and then I have this leaderboard of recommendations, and this pumps people up because they're like, oh, I can win free stuff because I'm like, if you can beat my top leader at 25 recos, I'll throw in a free peeler, you know? So people are pumped. They get out their phones at the end of the demo and they're going through their contacts. So don't worry. Um, you seem like you have the personality too, like where people are definitely going to be giving you numbers. So mm -hmm. you got this. You guys all see that? You guys all have that? Does she need to show it again? Does anyone need to see that again? Why don't you show it one, well, one more time so you can take a picture or a screenshot? You guys need this leaderboard on your initial goals page. Look at all of that. Look at all of that, all that proof of everybody who's given a sponsor. Everyone's been a sponsor and look at those, look at that leaderboard. Now, by the way, Brett, I would not do this and have your number one person be at three, right? But, you know, <laughs> um, you want to build towards it. So anyway, that's kind of cool. All right, sweet. So thank you, Sammy. Thank you for being awesome. All right, next up, Next up on phoning and getting more names and numbers specifically is Carmen. And uh, Carmen is doing an amazing job. And again, she started right before summer. She's um, doing it. She's over 30K. Uh, you're at, I think, 12 weeks in a row, over 1,000 now, Carmen. Uh, just doing some awesome things and uh, really being a leader so far as a, um, as a Northwoods division uh, re representation, you know, in the nation, uh, we will see when stats come out, but you no, know, definitely, definitely moving up as one of the top people in the nation here at 30 K. So let's go, let's go, Carmen, give us some tips on how to phone like a boss and get more names and numbers. Okay. So, um, for phoning like a boss, first of all, you just heard this a lot is consistency and showing up. So showing up, that's the first part to consistency. Um, you show up, you make calls, um, and then there's mentality that goes along with it. Um, you know, some of your phone jams aren't going to be great. Like yesterday at the phone jam, I my first, I had 45 calls in, I was 45 calls in and I'm booked one demo. Like that just, it sucks. You get down on yourself, um, but you can't, you can't because the average is out. Um, and again, Jason kind of showed this in the beginning, but you saw like I booked, you know, six in one hour, zero in another, just it, it'll average out. So you can't get down on yourself in that way. Um, and then phoning times. Uh, yes, you can phone all day. You know, if you're not on demo, start phoning, start booking some demos. Um, there are more efficient times. So in the morning during phone champs, or phone champs, during camp club, um, from like eight to nine, and then at night from like six to nine, those are the most efficient times. But you can phone all day. So don't be like, you can phone at two, 3 p.m. It doesn't matter. You can phone all day long. So that is huge. And then when you're actually on the phone, um, I'd say, you know, you have to, almost build rapport with people on the phone. So like in your demo, you're not gonna go as like deep on the phone, obviously, but you wanna build a little bit rapport. Even if you know them or they're like extended relative, build a little bit rapport to get like catch up with them. Um, you're gonna have a lot of, a lot easier time trying to book that demo than with them. So I'd say that uh, is the main thing for phoning. Um, and then if you can't make it, if you have another job or whatever, then schedule times that you can phone for yourself. Um, so I'd say those are the biggest things for phoning. Mm -hmm. And then what was the other? Oh, yeah, getting more names and numbers so you can oh, yeah. have a lot of people to call. Yes, yes. Okay, so I struggled with this. 
Um, Brett, I know you're talking about this before, but I really, really struggled with names and numbers and I kind of freaked out about it before I see two. Um, but I kind of reached out to a bunch of people on Snapchat. So friends, friends, parents and stuff. I was kind of scared at first to do that because I thought they're going to think I'm kind of weird or just, I don't know. So I was scared to do that. But then if you reach out to them, if you don't know them that well, it's fine. Like you're not going to see them ever again. If you call their parents, um, it's not like that you're going to meet them in person. Um, so don't be scared to call people you don't know. Mm-hmm. Also, um, with Facebook, uh, my parents, I had troubles getting numbers and names for them. I don't know if you guys saw it in group me, but I made a video explaining how I got my dad to um, give me some of his friends, coworkers, names and numbers. Um, so kind of asking your parents uh, for names and numbers, but they're going to be, some people will have like a wall up a little bit minded. So then I explained the why why cuckold was important, why I was doing it. I explained the goals. Um, that's when they opened up and that's when they started giving me the names and numbers because I got their support um, for, for the job. And then I went on Facebook. I went through my mom's Facebook. I sent out a bunch of messages um, to people saying, hey, like I'm, I'm Mindy Gardner's daughter. I'm working for Cuckoo. I explained what I was doing. Um, and then you just want to stress that you are going for a scholarship. That's what I always stress. Um, If they set up a demo, they don't need to get anything. Again, I just get credit for setting up the demo. Um, They're going to want to help you out. So I'd say that's big. So reaching out on Facebook and social media and stuff Mm -hmm. for the older, for your parents, friends. Those old people over 30. Yeah. (laughs) Um, How many of you honestly have seen Carmen's video that she made of asking her parents? Has anyone seen that? All right. So one, two, three of you. Hmm. Not all of you have, huh? It's really good. Let's see. It's like four minutes. What do you think, Mandrew? Should we play it now or just have them watch it later? What video is it? Watch it later. in group me. Yep. So it, it's in group me. We'll post it right now. Take an action step right now. Write down after this meeting. Today, watch that video. We'll post it again. But it's of uh, Carmen who's um, explaining what she did to her, uh, to her parents, and not what she did to them, um, how she presented to them to see the importance of it, of helping her out. After 12 weeks on the job, they finally gave her recommendations, right? 12 weeks of no, I don't wanna give you names and numbers, no, I don't want you to bother my friends, no. All of a sudden, here they all are. How great. Um, <clears throat> so. Who has questions for Carmen or managers again to interview her um, on getting more names and numbers and, and doing well on the phone? What keeps you going? Um, I'd say a good mentality, being positive, I guess. And then also kind of my competitiveness, honestly. <laughs> And, and well, and when I have really good demos, when I talk, like there's some demos when I'm like, okay, this is why I love this job. This is why I'm doing this. You'll talk to like, you'll meet the coolest people, especially when you get into reco. So you don't really know them yet. Um, and they just like blow your mind with the things they say or the people when you're building rapport, um, just everything they do with their job. Like it's just really, you meet really cool people on the job. And then after those demos, I'm like, okay, that's why, you know, what, this is why I'm doing it. You just meet really cool people. So who are you, uh, and then my other two questions, who are you competing with and how do you handle adversity? Um, honestly, I feel like I'm almost competing with myself a lot. It's more of like I set goals, standards for myself. So then I compete with that. Um, but then also like me and Sam and we have a good, like healthy competitive relationship, I'd say. Um, so we're always talking, but then we also like are competitive with each other, which helps me um especially for this push it's motivated me to keep scheduling demos and stuff um and then Vern, what was the second thing you said yeah how do you handle uh adversity okay you think about that so in the nation sammy this is a this is a week ago a week ago so for some competitive nature sammy out of thirty thousand students thirty thousand you're in the top one percent or top 1.1% at number 323 in the, in the company at, what does that say, 14,000 some? And then if, if, if the All-American were to end today, Carmen would, 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 get, would get the Atta Girl, 
the one out to top 50 get the All-American Scholarship recognition. And this is a week old, but yeah, Carmen, that should motivate you a little bit. Don't, 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 don't just get that at a girl, but numbered 51 at 25,000 so far. And here's where you want to look. If you're not seeing it in your office, well then move on up to the next or your division or your region and move up to the nation. So you can see here's some top people. If they're highlighted, they are in our division. There's a uh, Lewis, goes to school at Madison. You can see there. Um, 28,000. Here's what it takes to be in the top 50 in the nation. Another Madison guy, Wisconsin, Kaylee, right? Johnson County, Zach Molzer. Um, so 30,000, 40,000. Oh, 64,000. Will. You can see what it takes to be in the top 50 this year. So I want to share that because Carmen was talking about being competitive. So don't get number 51 this summer. All right. And then, uh, so how, what was it, Vern? How does she handle adversity? Yeah. Um, I kind of mentioned this this morning, but a big part of it is having a support system. Um, so in Kako and out of Kako, Sammy right now is probably my main support in Kako. Uh, we talk about a lot if we're going through a bad day with Kako or a bad day, you know, personally. Um, so that, that's huge to have someone there for you. And anyone who doesn't have one, I'm, I'm here for you, me and Sammy. You can text us, Snapchat us, well, we can be friends. Um, it does help because, you know, if you're having a bad day, you don't realize how many other bad days, you know, the top people are having too. Like some people think that, you know, I have like perfect demos, I sell sets every time. It is so not true. Like I have no sales, like no other, it's crazy. But um, it's just nice to have someone to talk to. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing about that, is that she has more no sales than some reps have demos. So that's also why she sells more. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Carmen. We appreciate it. And uh, let's give it up for Carmen. <clears throat> Thank you, Carmen and Sammy. Awesome. Um, next up on tips from the pros, we got Mr. Daniel, Daniel Lalazern. He's ready to go, looking fly, love it. So Daniel is one of the top sales reps, even though he's a manager, um, in, in the state, all right? So not only does he run an office, but he also knows how to sell a lot of Cutco. Um, he's at a $15,000 push. He's at multiple big weeks. Um, he's approaching $100,000 in we personal over it. sales. We what? over it, we over it. Oh, he's way over it, way, way over, over. it. And what's great is he's one of the freshest out of, um, out of selling, meaning a lot of managers, as they get into management, they focus on management. Like I haven't done a demo in a long time, right? But what's cool is Daniel and Lake and some of, some of these guys, especially Vern, are still on the Fair and Show team, are still out doing demos here and there. And so um, Daniel just started, it's crazy to think how, how it's only been this long, but it's already been this long, right? Of what has it been, two and a half years? Something like that? Not even. Wow. It's been great to see Daniel's advancement and Daniel's just, yeah, improvement and working with people on the demo, selling, all that. So he's for sure someone you want to listen to and for sure a great resource in the group me and even just in general for going big for a push. And I uh, was one of our top, what were you, were you the number one top rep your first summer? I think in the division, oh, you were yeah. number one, one or two. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Killing it. So Take it away, Daniel, at how to have a 15K plus push. All right. So for those of you that are on this call, congratulations. This is the single most important meeting to your career to date. So this, this call right now is the most important meeting that you could have been on. So genuinely, congratulations on being here for this because it's, it's not something to take lightly. Um, SC2 is an insane. It's insane. Um, all year, like my girlfriend, I've been dating her for a while now. She knows all about SC2. Like my family knows all about SC2. My sisters know all about SC2 because it's SC2. SC2 is the main event. We don't, we don't like downplay it. We're not like, oh yeah, this is the, the best meeting. Like this is the best meeting. Um, it's been a while since I've put on a tie and a suit. Um, I still got shorts on cause it's virtual, but it's been a while since I've like actually suited up because of this. So SC2 is the main event. 
and it doesn't matter where you're at. So a couple things with SE2, besides it being insane, what is a push? So you guys know what a push is. None of you have experienced SE2 besides some of the managers, but you guys like don't, you guys don't get it yet. You really don't. Um, it's straight up money camp. So the word push, if you like say push to like somebody that's vector trained, somebody that knows what a push is, they'll like, they'll like switch a gear in their head because they understand what happens after a push and what happens during a push. So I doubled, I doubled my career sales. I didn't like double what I did. I doubled where I was at. So I was at 7K going into SE2. I was at like 7,200. And then I sold 15K. So I just got off the phone not too long ago with a good friend of mine named Casey. Uh, he's a manager in Minneapolis. They're going to break the, the national record this year, the Minneapolis division. And uh, he told me that basically for his like first year, he did $60,000 out of his like 72,000 all only during pushes, only during pushes. Now that doesn't mean like just take off when it's not a push, but that's literally what his stats were. So the winner of SE2 my first summer, uh, he was out of town. He did like 37K for SE2. He was out of town for like a week and a half. He only, he only did it in like a week, 37K in a week. He's just a dude that, uh, reads the script, smiles, and uh, cuts food or shows video of food getting cut. So you will become a different person. Um, we talk a lot about upgrading your problems. And what that means is you really want to like level up. You want to level up your problems. If you have a problem of like, oh, I don't have names and numbers, upgrade that. Upgrade that to like, oh man, I have too many people and I don't have time to call them. Um, upgrade your mindset. You know, what what things affect you. Um, I'm not downplaying by any means, you know, when somebody dies, that's a horrible thing. But think about what your problems were. If some of you, some of you have experienced that, what your problems were, and then you have that family tragedy, you know how like minuscule those other things feel when there's something important like that, that's like way beyond level of importance. So when, when you experience adversity during the push, and when you experience what you become and who you become and the people that you can impact because of who you become, those other problems seem so small. You know, getting a B when you're a straight A student, that seems horrible. But when you can go through a push and experience adversity when it comes to like the real world, you have no idea how much that levels up your mindset, that levels up who you are, and that levels up what you're able to do. So Grant Cardone, if you guys don't know who Grant Cardone is, super successful. He bought a jet for a tax write-off at the end of the year because he's insane. Um, super good real estate guy, super huge sales trainer. He talks about how working hard is your duty. It's your duty for yourself, for your future self, for your future wife, for your future career. Like you have to do this for your future. There's, there's no limit. There's no limit to the things that you can do once you've experienced actually pushing. So just remember, I'm talking about pushing towards 15K. Just remember that your push is relative. It's very relative and no one in this world is going to care about it as much as you do. Your manager is going to be really high up there. Your manager cares about it a ton, but nobody's going to care about it like you care about it. So you got to remember to stay in your lane. When you set a goal for yourself, that is your goal. Like that is your goal. Um, if you look at people like Sammy and Carmen, yes, they're awesome and they're going to do very well and they're going to be very successful with their push. Um, but they're also going to be going for like 15, 20, 30 K. And you got to remember that that shouldn't matter to you. Use it as inspiration. Use it as, oh my gosh, I can actually, I can actually do more than what my goal was. Like that's the thing. Use it as motivation. Use them for tips. Use them as much as you can. But just remember, like, it's your push and you have to do it the way that suits you. So talk to your manager a ton. Um, I, I think there's a couple different ways to talk about how to push, how to sell 15K during an SE2. There's objective ways and there's subjective ways. So I put some of these in here. Some objective ways, this is what we talk about all the time. Like all of our meetings, they're all about objective ways. Sometimes we'll have some talks about subjective ways, but 
objectively, you got to have your schedule handy. You got to have it super handy. I never close my Google calendar because I'm always referring to it to see like what's next. What am I doing next? What am I doing tomorrow? What am I doing two days from now? And you have to be consistent with phoning. Objectively, you phone a ton, you're going to have a really good push. You phone a ton, you're going to have a really good push. Going into SE2, um, it was awesome to see the people that have over, over 18. And the reason I say 18 is because I had 18 demos going into SE2. So my goal, my goal for SE2 was the rock. I wanted the rock. I wanted to sell 12.5. Uh, but I also, there was, a, there was an incentive my summer. Um, we got some other incentives here now, but there was an incentive my summer where I could take my old division manager before uh, big daddy Jason could uh, get promoted to DVM. And he said that I could drive his, uh, I could drive his Beamer for anybody that sold 15 K. So once I got 12, five, probably like a week and a half to two weeks into my push, I was like, Oh, I could drive that Beamer. And let me tell you, that was insane. I took that, I took that bad boy, like 111 miles an hour down some country roads outside of uh, Wisconsin Dells during conference of champions. And it was insane. So goals, goals are something you should hold very sacred. Um, I remember during conference of champions, my first summer, um, we had a pre division meeting just like this. And uh, we all raised our hand at what our goal was. And uh, I was the only one that hit my goal for us for the COC push. And that following meeting after the push when it's like, all right, how did you guys do? Like who hit their goals? I was like the only one that hit it. And it was insane. It was insane. It was my, my goal was 5k. Cause that's what I set for myself. And that's what I did. Cause I didn't set the, I didn't say, Oh yeah, let's do 10k because why not? Let's do 10k. I set 5k. Cause it's like, okay, I'm actually pretty busy. I'm going to be going back to school very soon. And I hit my goal. So you hold that goal very sacred. So Five before, five after. Um, I probably did 45 to 50 demos during SE2. So going into the push with 18, I had a lot more demos to book after that initial 18. So a lot of times we'll see people that have like this huge first week and then they don't keep up with their phoning and they don't replace each demo with another demo. So to only have 18 demos going in, that's awesome. Where you guys are at is perfect. If you're not at that, that phone jam shouldn't be an emergency one. It should be like a mandatory one. But I did five before, five after. I would either, you know, since it's virtual, it's so easy. You just literally just pull up the phone script, make five calls. Honestly, when I was making those five calls before and five after, I was like, oh man, I hope nobody picks up. I just need to focus on this demo. And then all of a sudden, oh, one person picks up and you got a demo booked. So five before, five after, it's so easy to keep your demo or to keep your push just moving along because you replace every demo with another demo. Um, knowing the RECO approach. Objectively, you just got to know the RECO approach. Have it memorized. It's like eight bullets. You guys, you guys have any idea how many songs you have memorized in your head that your brain just like continuously fills? Your brain doesn't have like a max storage capacity. There's like no limit to it. Know the approach, memorize the RECO approach, and those recos will just fuel the rest of it. If you go through your reco approach, you get a sheet of recos and you ask, okay, these are nice people that'll help me out. Now, if you were in my shoes, who would you call first, second, and third? You star those people. You could only do demos with those starred people and your whole push would just be all with like who your customers think are the best people to show to. So when you're getting your recos, when you have that memorized, say, okay, if you were in my shoes, who would you call first? And they'll be like, oh, now he's just looking for the people that'll buy, which is perfect because it's like, yep, star those people, call those people first and make sure that you do demos with those star people. Knowing the close approach. First is reco approach. You got to learn that. The next one is knowing the close. When you know the close, it sounds more comfortable. Customers are way more comfortable saying yes to the homemaker, saying yes to the next sets. Um, and then another thing objectively, talk to your manager constantly. You really have to. You got to talk to your manager. You got a demo. Hey, I got a demo. Cool. Smile a lot. Cut the food. Who is it with? This is a Mac customer. Awesome. Kill the demo. Get recos. And then give me a call after and let me know how it goes. Talk to your managers so much because they'll help you. But then also know your managers are busy. They can't always answer. So it's got to be up to you. Think, okay, 
Lake didn't answer, Jason didn't answer, Vern didn't answer, Daniel didn't answer, what do I think that they'd say? Okay, they'd probably say, make sure you make your five calls after. They'd probably say, get some food so you're energized for your next couple demos. They'd probably say, have my schedule ready, have a, have a sleep timer ready, and then front load your push. So these 18 demos, these 20 demos, these 30 demos that you have ahead, that's awesome. When you front load the beginning of your push, then the last like couple days, the last week, you can, you can really kind of like don't because you have the opportunity to do more, but you can really coast towards the end if you front load it. Um, I've had multiple pushes where it was like last two days, I'm like, oh crap, I'm three to 5K away from my goal. And, it, and it's scrambling. It feels so good when you have like your goal nearly met and then you can get closer. So I think those objective ways, we know those, we can't really like fix those. It's just a matter of doing them. But then it's the subjective ways. So I, I, did, I had a big debate on if I wanted to put sleep schedule on the objective or subjective, but it's totally subjective. When you go to sleep will have an impact on how you do in the push. I am somebody that could literally stay up on YouTube or my phone until like 4 a.m. every night, but not during the push. No way. No way. You, you got to have that sleep schedule. When you're, when you're present, and I don't mean like there and like in your PJs and like half asleep during the, the morning alliance calls. When you're present, they'll, they'll work wonders. So what you're listening to as well. During, during pushes, I'm only listening to podcasts or music that like help me think about money. Like straight up money or positivity. Because those things will impact how you react and how you respond to customers. So also you're going to money camp, like straight up, you're going to money camp, pre-frame that with your family and your friends, the people that you talk to. If you're not responding to people faster than, or as fast as normal, let them know you're going to money camp. My girlfriend, she knows all about pushes. She knows that it's like, okay, I'm not going to see Daniel super a lot because he's got SC2, he's got the push. Um, and then really your mindset. So um, before I talk about mindset, I want to talk about your me time. So put this in your schedule too. Um, your me time is like what you actually want to do with your time. Like put that in there. Don't just go like absolutely crazy with the push, but put that me time in there and spend it how you want to spend it. But don't, don't spend too much of that time. So your mindset, literally anything can happen. Anything can happen at any given time. You never know who's going to want to get the Cutco Kitchen and you never know who's going to get like an ultimate set. You never know what's going to happen. So just know that anything could happen. So be ready for when that crazy thing happens. Um, when there's something that happens that you don't enjoy, you have, you have five minutes, max, absolute max of bitching and crying. And then you have to know, I can't change that. If it already happened, you can be upset about it. Your manager will be okay if you're upset about it. But after five minutes, you can't change it. Utilize your time. Um, I think that goes without saying, just because I'm a little short on time here. Uh, just know that, like I said, you're not alone, but you're the one that needs to do it. Your manager is going to be there and your accountability, your accountability buddy um, is going to be there, but you're the one that has to do it and figure out the things that you need in your schedule. Um, figure out the things that you need in your schedule. And then other than those things that you already have planned, you should be phoning or you should be on a demo until 9 p.m., 9.30 p.m. Once it comes to 10 o'clock at the end of the day during the push for these next 17 days, just kick your boots off and relax because that's your time. You can't really do a whole lot. You can work on your names list if you want, but just really just relax with those times. Uh, did somebody say money? I think you guys know this, but like the income opportunity in the next 17 days is insane. Um, my, this is right from my SC2, my first SC2. Um, for the first 2,500 was at 25% made $625. The next 10K was at 30% made three grand. And the next 2,500 was at 35% and I made 87 or 875. Notice the difference between the first 2,500 and the second 2,500. I made an extra $250 and I did the math. That's about 12 demos. So that's about 12 hours. Just because of where I was at, after the push, towards the end of the push, when I was at 35%, I was making an extra $20 an hour 
every hour. And then I was on assistant manager pay. Some of you want to know more about that. Some of you want to know about Leadership Academy. I made an extra 850 during the push because of my AM pay and because of the hard work that I put in throughout the summer for a total of 3550 or 5350, a little dyslexic there. Um, I don't know about you guys, but like I could just pay for my entire rent for the whole year just with that, just for the, the work that I put in for 17 days. Um, also, if you're at Dirty 30, it's going to be even more than that, minimum. So for those of you that are actually pushing this, um, ask me for this video or just go to Cutco Mike push story and find this video. Um, the last three days of my January push, um, I listened to this nonstop, literally nonstop because it was inspiring. Um, I'm not even kidding. I cried twice listening to this story. It's not even emotional. I just was really hype about it. And it's, it's a really cool story. So ask, ask me about that. Ask your manager about that. Um, but just know, just know, I see two is insane. It is, it, you, you get out of it what you put into it. Um, I was a cross country runner. And if you didn't do, if you told your coach that you did your Saturday and your Sunday run, that's awesome. It's going gonna, it's gonna to serve you better when it comes to state and when it comes to conference. But if you didn't actually make those phone calls like you said you were going to, then you're going to pay for it. You're going to pay for it instead of your customers paying for it. And you want your customers to pay for it because then they're going to be hooked up with Cutco, the literally greatest kitchen product in the entire world. And you're going you're gonna to become a whole new person. So congrats on, on being on this call. This is the most important call that you could be on. Um, I'm going to say it for, for your entire life. Um, I'm currently in my post-college career, and uh, I, I doubt that it, this would have happened if I didn't push for SE2 my first summer. So good luck, and uh, I'm excited to see what you guys do. For Daniel. All right. So we're getting ready. We're getting ready.